after an exhilarating race in Montreal, Canada, we head back to the United States with only two races before the chase cutoff here in the 2024 Wawa Cup Series. And once again, we head to a track that we have never run at before in the Wawa Cup Series, but one we all know and love. It's going to be a wild one here tonight around the 7 eighths of a mile short track in Newton, Iowa. And only two races until the chase cutoff means these drivers are going to be ultra aggressive around this short track. It's going to be a fun one here for the Iowa Corn 350. 88 laps of action around the Iowa Speedway here on a Friday night in the 2024 Wawa Cup Series. Hello everybody, this is AG here and welcome here to the Iowa Speedway in Newton, Iowa. The first time we've had the Wawa Cup Series here in the first Cup Series race on this racetrack since 2015. And a uh, little note, I went back and watched that race. Roger Garuth was second in that event. He, he should have won it, but you know what? We're back. We're back here at the Iowa Speedway, and we're excited for it. Of course, Real Life Cup Series is going to be here in a couple of days. Really don't know how that's going to turn out, but I can uh, I can pretty much guarantee you that this race is going to be a fun one. And hey, with only two races left to go until that chase cutoff, you know these guys are going to be aggressive. And we got a lot of the guys who are going to be in the chase and who are fighting for that chase spot who are starting up front in this race here tonight. Turn alongside Stuart Grant for the call of this one. And right now, Stuart, you got both of your guys in the top 10. Ladovic Charette, she's 20 points ahead of the cutoff. She does have a win. Matt Tuck's right there on that cutoff line, only 12 points ahead of Braden Perez. The good thing is, Ladovic starts 10th, Matt starts 11th. What do those guys need to do to maintain a good points position here today and go into New Hampshire with a pretty good cushion going into the chase? Yeah, well, it's all about maintaining, or just executing, execution of fundamentals on pit road uh, for us. It's about making sure that we get the... Uh, I suppose just just making sure we get no mistakes, clean run off pit road. I've no idea as to whether or not cautions will come into play into in, in this race. Um, and then in turn, from a driver perspective, you know Matt starts on the inside. You want to be on the inside more often than not. The outside can work here at Iowa, um, or at least in theory it can. Uh, you know, starting eleventh is a good position to be in, and. You are right now, and we'll talk about the points in a moment, but a, quite a few positions ahead of Braden Perez, who's the first car out. So uh, particularly with Matt, uh, it's really important that just, just kind of consistently maintaining speed um, and just make sure to get off to the best possible start. Track position is always the best possible way to, uh, to you know, th throughout these races, the best possible way to gain points um, just by getting track position off the start or off restart. So... Um, yeah, and then maintain that consistency throughout. Um, a win would be nice, trust me, but uh, not necessarily the worst result if you know, just like fringe or top 10, depending on where other drivers play yeah. out. But uh, I really wanted to look at 6th through 16th in the standings in particular because those are the drivers that um, probably have the most at stake in this race. And we'll see those points standings on your screen. Of course, we've got a very tight battle for that cutoff line, but then you see a bit of a gap there between Nicholas Samadio and Jack Haas. And essentially, everyone from Samadio on up, as long as they have solid top 20 finish here today, they're all going to lock their spot. Of course, a maximum of 46 points towards the championship in a singular race, which means if you've got 45 points, the worst you can do is tie with the next driver. So if you go into next week's race at Iowa with a 46-point lead on the cutoff or on anyone, you got that advantage on that driver. And uh, we got a lot of guys who are well over 46 points ahead of the cutoff line, including, of course, Thomas Troxel, who has already clinched a spot in the chase, looking to go back-to-back -back in the regular season championship as well. He's 96 points ahead of the cutoff. Looking for another win, though. He's only got one win on the season. He's got a good shot at doing so, starting from third here tonight. Rogel Norn is 75 points ahead. Blaine Key 64 ahead. Trey Barto and Nicholas Samidio tied for fourth, both 55 points ahead. And then, just like you mentioned, Stewart, starting with sixth place, kind of down the 16th. That's kind of the, uh, the measure right there. And we got some wild card drivers back in there, but... 
Further up, Jack Howes only 24 points ahead of that cutoff. Brian Webb and Ladovic Shrepo have tied for the seventh position, 20 points ahead. Our defending champion, Drew Webb, is only 18 points ahead of the cutoff, and Matt Tuck is 12 points ahead. Now, Jack Kaz, Ladovic Shrepo, they both have wins to fall back on in the wild card, but Brian Webb, Drew Webb, and Matt Tuck at the moment do not, and that makes things very, very interesting. Brain Perez, 12 points behind. He doesn't have a win either. He starts 23rd in this race. And then you got those wild card drivers there, Kirsten Bell, 32 points behind, who starts on the pole here tonight, by the way. Matthew Hubert still needs a win. He's 37 points behind. Daniel Paulus Jr. currently holding on to the last wild card, 38 points behind. And then it's a long shot for these drivers to make it in. But Laura Chung, Angel Gutierrez, 53 points behind, respectively, at least make it in the top 10 in points. Brady Marigal, LJ Semedo, and Logan Williams also have a mathematical chance at making the top 10. Uh, but for a lot of those guys, they're going to need a win and maybe two wins, essentially, to get as many points as they can to have a shot at the wild card. What you see right there is currently Kirsten Bell and Daniel Paulus Jr. You could have Ladovic Charette slip back and fall into that wild card as well, which will definitely make things difficult for drivers like Gutierrez and Semedo. Gutierrez, really, at this point, is the only other driver who can jump Daniel Paulus Jr. for that last wild card spot. Semedo, 41 points behind that cutoff, and then, like I said, if any of those guys leave this race 46 points behind or more... That's it. They're not really going to have a chance. And that wild card's a bit of a dynamic one because you could have some of those wild card drivers move into the top 10 and knock a driver who doesn't have a win outside. So who knows how it's going to go next week at New Hampshire. Regardless of the fact that we're here at Iowa for what will definitely be an interesting race, and we're excited to see how it all goes down here tonight in this Iowa Corn 350. It's Kirsten Bell starting on the pole position in the 93 for Evans Ross Racing. Alongside her, it's Logan Williams, who won at Gateway two weeks ago. And, hey, a fast-paced short track. It may play in Logan Williams' favor again. Of course, he's going to have... A lot of trouble getting into the chase, but he's 47 behind the wild card right now. He still has a mathematical chance. Thomas Troxel, of course, our pulling leader, already in the chase. He is to the inside of his teammate, Chase Buck, who won the last race in Montreal last week. They make up row number two. Laura Chung, Rule Dorn make up row number three. You got Drew Webb and Blaine Keys in row four, and then it's Philip Torres, Ladovic Shrepp there in row number five. And some notable drivers throughout the field. Matt Tuck there starting in 11th. Angel Gutierrez starting 13th. Go back here. There's Jack Cows on the inside lean midway through the field. Braden Perez 23rd. Brian Webb 25th. Trey Barto 27th. And then Nicholas Samadio 29th. Of course, for Barto and Samadio, they're pretty well ahead of that cutoff. But uh, for those other guys, it's going to be interesting to see what they can do as this race goes along. Let's go ahead and get these guys to roll off here from the Iowa Speedway. And, of course, Kirsten Bell going to be leading us off. She's already won twice this season. But, Stewart, a lot of strong drivers up front to start this one out in the Iowa Corn 350. Who do you think is going to get it done here tonight the Iowa Speedway? Yeah, there's so many uh, drivers I could go for here. I think go for a driver that is actually out of it, of course, Logan Williams. Probably, well, I mean, still mathematically eligible to make the top 10 and a bit closer in the wildcard race, but uh, that was excellent two weeks ago at Gateway, and uh, this team, Appalachian Motorsports, has already gone to victory lane three times, and I think Williams, you know, he uh, had a strong run back end of last year, I think he's starting to pick up the pace again outside the front row, I think he's uh, in a good spot to win this race. We'll have to see what he can do. Kirsten Bell is going to be a strong driver. And watch out for Thomas Troxel. He won Richmond last year. And this is a similar track to that. But, hey, we're here at Iowa. We're Green Flag Racing once again on a Friday night in the Iowa Corn 350. Very, very good jump out of the top two drivers of Kirsten Bell, Thomas Troxel. These guys trying to shuffle around this 32 machine who might not necessarily have the speed to run up front. Of course, he had the speed last week in Montreal. He's got to be careful right here with Blaine Keys. Whoa. And Keys just got sent around. And that'll be our first caution of the night. He's got to be careful to not get back into these guys, into some Meadow and Tanner Parton. And the caution's going to fly, and he's going to also get sent around by the 31 of Corey Case. Yikes. Wow. That was not wow. the start that Blaine Keys won into this race. No doubt about it. He got bumped around by 
nearly the entire field in that opening lap right there. And uh, Blaine's going to get sent to the back of the field because of that, but he does thankfully have minimal damage to that race car. See if anyone comes down the pit lane right here, and uh, we do have a bunch of guys coming down. This is going to be very interesting. Early takers to the pit lane. Of course, the majority of the leaders are staying out, which makes sense, but we got some guys in the back going to try to play a little strategy. About a 48-lap fuel run here tonight for these guys. Jack Haas down the pit lane. Bruno Diacomo, Seth Cole, Matthew Hubert, Braden Perez as well. And Perez is kind of in a position. Oh, he's got some damage to that oh, 23 machine. Yeah. Oh, boy. That's not good for the 23 team trying to make it into the chase. Only 12 points behind Matt Tuck coming into this one. It's like Barto also has a bit of damage in the four machine as well. We had, I think we had a little bit of a stack up right there with those guys in the back of the field when Blanky was coming back up. Well, Stewart, not necessarily the way we uh, thought this race was going to start. But you know what? Majority of the race leaders still in this thing, including both of your drivers of uh, Matt Tuck and Ladovic Charette. Kirsten Bell continues to lead here at Iowa. Let's see what happens to bring up the first caution of the night here in the Iowa Corn 350. Well, near four wide situation off the exit at turn number two right there. And Blaine Key is getting in the chase buck. And Wednesday Sprint Series winner of Joey Brown in the middle of all that as well. And Blaine just goes for a spin. The downside is even though he saves it, he tries to merge back on. And uh, this is where things get a little rough for the 41 because you got these guys going through the corner. Blaine Key's trying to keep his momentum onto the racetrack. And he's going to get into LJ Semedo right here in the 71 machine. And uh, just an innocent bystander to that one right there. So some damage on the 71 and 18. And then the 31 of Corey Case is going to come through here. He's on the outside of Turner at the back of the field. And the 31 is going to get into the left rear quarter panel of that 41 and send the 41 around a third time. He he got wrecked three times, essentially, in one lap, Blaine Keys did. Such a, such a shame there for the racing motorsports driver who started way better than where he's going to end up finishing here tonight. Well, four wide doesn't really work at Iowa, as you can see. Three wide hardly works, and four wide doesn't. Amazing save by uh, Keys to keep it out of the wall, but then a little bit of less than Stella there, merging back up onto the racetrack, and then, I don't know, or in case maybe a little overzealous, perhaps, trying to get in between, uh, in the middle of that, I suppose, but uh, a bit of damage on the 41, and uh, such, such a shame for Keys, but uh, it should be almost certainly will still make the chase so even though it's tough it might be a tough result tonight it's uh it should be all right in terms of chase position whereas he had a pretty good buffer going into this one and he's still in the race as well so we'll see what he does as we get back to racing uh, had that split strategy coming down the pit lane right there um and then this 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 little mess happened and uh trey barto got a little bit of a buckle on his hood I think uh, Brain Perez as well also got a bit of a tap there. So a little interesting there is I think Sam Idio is trying to come back onto the racetrack and they got held up a little bit. You see the buckle there on Perez's car. Tough break for those guys. They're going to be held back a little bit, especially for Perez who's right there below that cutoff. He needs a good run here tonight. He may not get it. Let's go ahead and get back to racing here in the Iowa Corn 350 at the Iowa Speedway. We're back here at the Iowa Speedway in the Iowa Corn 350. Blaine Keys getting sent around by Chase Buck on the first lap. Not necessarily the moment of glory that Chase Buck had last week when he passed Blaine Keys for the win in Montreal. He still sits 10th while Blaine Keys is at the back of the field. A good thing for Blaine, at least in regards to the chase. He came into this race 64 points ahead and still very well could clinch a spot into the chase here tonight if he can get himself into the top 20. It's Kirsten Bell who has led every lap so far, looking for her third win of the season. Thomas Troxel looking for number two, same with Logan Williams. Laura Chung looking for her first career win in the Wild Wild Cup series, and hey, a win for Laura Chung would put her in the wild card. And uh, you know what? Guys like Kirsten Bell, Daniel Paulus Jr. do not want her to win this race, and Drew Webb still looking for his first win of the season. Everybody is still on the lead lap, and some guys come down the pit in the back of the field, but essentially everyone's still on the same cycle in terms of strategy with that 48 lap fuel run. Logan Williams going for second there on Thomas Troxel as Kirsten Bell pulls away and continues to lead here at Iowa. Here 
Good restart for Logan Williams, who was so fast with so much of that race at Gateway a few weeks back. And uh, he looks racy early on. We haven't seen a lot of uh, the action so far because of that caution. But uh, now that they're a restarting single file, uh, you know, we're still going to see a lot of passing, but uh, we're not going to see like the three wide that we saw that uh, may have caused that first action. But uh, yeah, Williams off to a very good start. I'm not sure how the hit strategy is going to play out for those guys that did come down. Because as I mentioned, uh, you know, I'd much rather have track position. And particularly, you know, coming down on lap three, I just don't think that the tyre wear is going to make that much of a difference around here. Is, uh, here's two of the guys that, uh, you know, right on that cutoff, Drew Webb and Matt Tuck, you know, ninth and uh, ninth and tenth in points. Uh, quite remarkable to consider Charette, Webb, Tuck, Perez, you know, they're all competing for those positions. And those are all guys that were top six in points a year ago. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, funny how... Things can uh, turn very quickly, as I think Bill Torres, they do like to ride the wall at times on that outside. I think the 20 was just uh, rubbing up alongside the wall there, which is uh, probably not ideal for, um, for, for that car. Definitely interesting to see, like you said, those guys who were top six in points last year kind of run where they are. Now, granted, they're still running well. I think it's just a testament to how much better guys like Rogel Dorn and Blaine Keyes have been this year, especially compared to last year. And then, of course, you also got Trey Bartow in the mix, who uh, was one of those drivers caught up in that accident and uh, had damage, at least from some incident. And uh, he is, I don't know where he is on the racetrack. We probably uh, completely missed him right there. He's moving his way through the field, I think. Or, or you know what? You know what? He's not on the racetrack anymore. It's funny how I mentioned him, oh, and uh, he just blew a camshaft. And we didn't even notice wow. it. That is a shame for Trey Barto, and he is not going to clinch a spot quite yet. So he's going to have to make sure he has a good run at New Hampshire next week in order to solidify his spot in the chase. Blaine Keys as well also struggling in this one. Obviously got caught up in that wreck, and uh, that's where things stand right now. Robel Dorn trying to make a move on Matt Tuck. Matt Tuck going to lose a spot, but. For Matt Tuck, especially with Brain Perez having his issue, and currently the 23 sits 37th, Matt really just needs a top 10, top 15 run, and he's good to go. I mean, if it weren't for that 31 team last week in Montreal, you guys would be in a much different position right now with Matt Tuck, but they just like Blaine Keys this week. You never know what's going to happen in terms of who gets wrecked and what happens on the racetrack, and... Uh, that's why, even though it's a rating series and a lot of how well you run to, is determined by the ratings, there's still a lot of luck involved. I and mean, we just asked Logan Williams, you know how good of a driver he is. And once again, he's 85 points behind the cutoff and essentially needs to win both of these races to have any chance and making the chase. So you just never know how a season's going to play out. But uh, we're seeing a lot of the strong guys up front. As for the race lead, Logan Williams looking on Kirsten Bell for that top spot. Trying to find a nose to the inside. You got Drew Webb trying to make a move on Laura Chung. That is going to be for the fourth position. Laura's going to try to get that outside lane to work to her advantage, though, and she will be able to clear that 99 off the corner. But Drew Webb really going to try to dive bomb it into the corner right there. We saw a couple of dive bomb moves in the Sprint Series race on Wednesday night, and you know what? We might see more of the same here tonight as this race goes along. Here comes Logan Williams. He's got a nose to the inside right here. Kirsten's going to go a little wide off the exit, and she's going to get the momentum off the exit to stay out front in the 93 machine. And we saw it right there on display with Bell, just getting that, just kind of like, it's not really like the outside per se, but it's like a middle group, where it's just able to get that, just to work, just to be able to get power off into turn four, but uh, here comes Williams again, back to the inside, trying that bottom. We'll see if, uh, you see Bell just oh, drifted up the racetrack a little bit. That's going to open the door here for Williams. Seems like turns one and two is where you probably want to make the pass, and it looks like Williams is going to get Bell right here. And Logan Williams is going to get his second win of the season. Of course, got the win at Gateway just two weeks ago. And, you know, Appalachian Motorsports, they're pretty strong on these short tracks. I mean, just remember Bristol. They led all but literally one lap in that race. We all know how that turned out. And, of course, Logan Williams got the win at Gateway. Nicholas Samadio got the win in North Wilkesboro. And, uh, you know what, perfect timing with a couple of short track type chassis tracks coming up here in the last two races before the chase. Of course, Sam Mineo, not as strong as Logan, but he has avoided any major issue here tonight running 14th, and that's good enough for him to clinch a spot into the chase if things stay the way they currently are right now. So going to be interesting to see how that ends up falling in line for him. Drew Webb's coming in that 99, though. 
And uh, you, you got to think, you know, that, that Titan Fury camp, they are a little bit anxious about Drew Webb in the position he's in right now. By this time last year, he had two wins. He was battling with Thomas Trossel for the regular season title. Right now, he's only 18 points ahead of the cutoff, but uh, a good strong run here tonight. And he could actually clinch a spot into the chase ahead of that cutoff if things go a certain way. He's up to third now. Rogaldorn also looking very strong here in the 74. He may actually take third away from Drew Webb right here. Matt Tuck trying to get around Thomas Troxel. And these are all guys that uh, maybe, maybe with the exception of Logan Williams, who we expect to run and contend for this championship. Kirsten Bell, she just needs a solid run. She may even make the top 10 in points if things go her way in these next couple of races. But uh, having those two wins under her belt has really solidified her spot in the wild card race at this point. And while she may not get any bonus points if she ends up as a wild card, just keep in mind, Travis Crampton went into that last race last year as a championship contender, and he had no bonus points going in to the chase. So going to be fascinating to see what Kirsten could do. She is definitely going to be a contender in this title race, assuming she makes the chase here in a couple weeks. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think the Travis Crampton comparison is uh, relatively apt here because Drew Webb, tell you what, Drew Webb is, uh, he looks like he's on a mission at the moment in that 99 because uh, that car... You know, he's been able to work his way up from the restart. He's now, as you see, Bell was up against the wall, and that's uh, going to affect her into turn one. I think we have another. Is there another caution? No, nope. still caution? green. Nope, never mind. I was tripping. That's my bad. Uh, but yeah, Drew Webb. You know, he, you know, he ninety points. He hasn't had a. He hasn't had a as good of a. He still had a very good season, but you know, not as good of a season. He's, he's a little bit of frustration there. He looks really racy here. Um, and this could be the night for the 99 team that uh, he finally gets that first win of the year. We're going to have to see how Drew Webb can fare with Logan Williams right here. Matt Tuck is also looking strong. Knock on wood for your six, Stewart. Rogel Dorn as well. Ladovic's also moving up front. And, you know, it, it wouldn't be a Wawa Cup Series race without this number 11. This is uh, Joey Brown who won the Sprint Series race on Wednesday in this 11 machine. Uh-oh. Oh, oh Rogel Dorn oh. just blew up. Oh my! Wow. Well, my heart skipped a beat, and I'm sure yours did as well. With Matt Tuck and Ladovic Strat right around that area, it's Rogel who has an issue, and that's gonna do it for the Hamill Racing Enterprises driver here tonight, Iowa. My oh my! And that jammed these guys up right here. Matt Tuck, Ladovic Charette, Kirsten Bell, and how about all three of your guys right on each other? How about this 11 car? And uh, Matt was telling me the other day that you are actually formulating points for the hot seat cars, and this 11 would be 18th in points if it was a full-time car, yeah. if I'm not mistaken? Yes, it would be. So, uh, yeah, no, we've been, we've been really uh, we're really happy with 11 and the way... Oh, has, and the caution's uh, out. Andrew oh, Miller, the, uh, LJ Semedo at the back of the field. So, oh, big uh... Crash. That's going to give us a little bit of a break in the action here. It's still not close enough to make it to the end of the race on fuel at this point. As we have 58 laps to go. Well, sorry, 60 laps to go, essentially. And it's about a 48-lap fuel run. So uh, if this is the last pit stop and we list last caution, I should say, of the night, things could really get interesting near the end of this race. But I would imagine everyone's going to come down now. First of all, tire wear isn't near as significant as North Wilkesboro. You still want to have some fresh good years there. Get a little bit more speed in comparison to other drivers. Logan Williams going to lead us down the pit lane. And and I, this is one of those tracks where I do like to see a cycle under caution. The merge area on the backstretch is very close to each other with exit and entrance. And sometimes things get a little interesting back there. But we don't necessarily have to worry about that. Under the yellow flag, Logan Williams, first one down the pit lane. Of course, Kirsten Bell has the first pit stall. That's the advantage that that team has. I would imagine, oh, only two tires for Logan. And it looks like two tires for a lot of these guys here on this pit stop. Logan Williams, Kirsten Bell, Thomas Tronsel, Matt Tuck, Laura Chung. Drew Webb's going to lose a few positions right there. Jack Haas, remember Jack Haas came down on lap four. He's able to gain some ground there on those guys in that exchange. And we'll have to see what he can do. Martinsville winner trying to get his second win of the season. But Dovic and Joey Brown a little bit slower there off the exit of the pit lane, but nothing too majorly drastic 
for any of the top contenders running in this race. Well, it's going to be an interesting restart, but first, let's see what happens to bring out the second caution of the night here in this Iowa Corn 350. LJ Semedo and Andrew Miller getting into it in the back of the field. LJ Semedo. Um, yeah, that's just a little bit too much into the corner right there, if you ask me. Right in the Andrew Miller. They do a little Tokyo drift in the middle of a cornfield in Iowa. And uh, they just stay together there and eventually spin each other out. As Semedo was on the apron right there and going to take that 97 with them. Very unfortunate wreck because this is going to put us in an interesting situation in terms of the fuel mileage because that uh, last pit stop is going to be right near the end of the race and could get a little interesting in terms of how this race plays out. But uh, regardless of the fact, LG Semedo, Andrew Miller caught up in this wreck. And uh, they're going to be sent to the back of the field because of it. But they will still both be able to continue after this one as well. Talked about a little bit of uh, just driving in just a little too hard there, LJ Semedo. A little too overzealous. Once again, we've seen that a couple of times already. And uh, gets into Miller. And they just hooked on each other. And... Uh, yeah, luckily, that was only a two-car accident and not a lot more. You saw guys like uh, Zachary Fitzwater barely got involved in that one. So, uh, fortunately, just the two cars involved, those two will be able to continue. It uh, does make things interesting with fuel strength. Let to see how that ends up shaking out. We do know Logan Williams is the race leader. Let's see what he does on the restart here in the Iowa Corn 350. We're back once again at the Iowa Speedway here on a Friday night. And only two races until the chase cut off, and some chase contenders have had issues here tonight, including uh, Robel Dorn dropping the clutch right there, and that is his night, unfortunately. Of course, he came in 75 points ahead of the cutoff, but the regular season title is essentially, uh, it could be unlocked by the end of the night for Thomas Troxel, which means more bonus points going into the chase for Thomas Troxel. 15 bonus points for winning the regular season championship, and then, of course, three more bonus points for each win that you have. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how that ends up shaking out next week at New Hampshire once we are done with the raised dies and tubing 300. We know how that race went last year. we got a race here tonight to figure out as well. They will have to come down again before the end of this race as we're going to restart here with 56 laps to go and a 48-lap fuel run. Logan Williams, Kirsten Bell, Thomas Troxel, Matt Tuck, Laura Chung... The top five off the pit lane. Logan going really wide. That is not what you want to do oh at the restart. And Kirsten Bell trying to take this lead back away from Logan Williams. Yeah, don't want to be uh, going up out of that groove there. You can see on the racetrack, open the door for Bell to count. But uh, Williams able to hold on at least for the time being. Although the 93 looked pretty racy here on the restart. Five kind of somewhat broken away from uh, Jack Haas. Here goes Matt. Hopefully he can uh, make this stick to the inside for third place. A little bit of three wide, I think, back in there as well. I think Ladovic was three wide on the bottom, but Matt to the inside. And he gets stuck on the bottom. We've seen the outside lane can work at times earlier on in this race, but he's still there right at the quarter. <laughs> and looks like he drives it in pretty hard into turn one. I think he will clear the 62 up to third. What I'd love to see. Mm -hmm. Matt Tuck looking strong right now up to the third position. Troxel, Laura Chung, Drew up trying to rebound here. Of course, I-99 was really fast before the caution came out. He was actually closing in on Logan Williams for the race lead. Win the yellow flu. Lost a few positions on pit lane, but he's regaining those back. Jack has How about Brady Margar, the other? Hamill car is, uh, oh boy, Chase Buck again. You got Joey Brown in the middle of all that there in the 11 machine. Bernardo Oliveira, Nicholas Samadio, and Buck slipping back a little bit there in the 32 machine. I don't know where that speed came from last week from this team. Uh, definitely a huge surprise considering how Chase Book has run this season and uh, definitely not uh, the best of runs for him. He was a short track dominator last year with that team. Uh, not necessarily the case this year. How about uh, good runs for Philip Torres and Brad Stover right now? New ownership there that uh, 88 team. Tanner Parton going to be overtaking the ratings for the rest of the season so they may see a bit of improvement there at what is now TP Motorsports. There's Brad Stover slipping back there. Sam Adio gets a run on him. Back up front for the race lead. And Kirsten Bell is about two car lengths behind Logan Williams. Matt Tuck holding off Thomas Troxel. Jack Haas just got around. Drew Webb for position right there. And 
You know, this 39, they kind of knew what they were doing. Of course, Evans Ross Racing, they know what they're doing. They're a very strong team and looking to get both of their drivers in the chase. I know you guys are looking to do so as well. Jack High is up to the sixth position now, essentially on the same cycle as everybody else. So coming in there on lap number four proved to be a pretty good move there for that team. Yeah, it's funny because uh, I reckon they're probably the only example of that strategy working out because uh, I think a lot of those guys that came down earlier have, haven't have really moved their way forward. I'm not sure if Sam Adio actually came down that lap or not. I, I don't actually remember off the top of my head, but uh, it looked like he gained. If he did come down, he I gained a bit of I don't think he did. Ground, but, uh, yeah. I, I, was, I feel like, well, I wasn't sure. My memory's getting too much. I think, I think uh, what but, happened way, was he uh, was kind of caught with guys to his outside trying to come down the pit lane and he was down there but he didn't actually come down the pit lane. Uh, I remember him staying out right there. Ladovic Charette trying to make a move on Brady Marigrel. That's for eighth. Ladovic moving her way up through the field. That's a good thing for you guys there. Uh, the 11 and this this is where I feel like the driver ratings do come into effect. You know once you have that cycle of pit stops and things kind of get squirrely on a restart and uh, Joey Brown slipping back right there. His first ever cup start I do believe. Um, got the win, of course, on Wednesday. He's right now down around the 20th position. Top two starting to pull away a little bit from the rest of the field. Logan Williams, Kirsten Bell, of course, only about a second there than the Matt Tuck in the 54. And as this run goes along, these guys might find some speed up to the 93 and the 95, especially if Kirsten gets a run to the inside of the 95. They go side by side a little bit. That'll bring these guys right in. And that 93 is right there on the back bumper of Logan Williams. And here we go. Kirsten Bell back to the inside, trying to take the lead back away from Logan Williams here, about halfway through this Iowa Corn 350. Yeah, I saw that run off of turn four. You want to try and make that try and make that move to the inside in one or two because they can get the run on the outside. It doesn't look like Williams will be able to do so. It looks like he's rubbing up against the wall, and that's going to hinder his progress into turn one. Open the door maybe for Tuck and Troxel in, in the, the third and fourth positions. But uh, I'll tell you what, the 93, uh, well, you know, currently coming in as a wildcard driver, probably wants to get to the top ten just for more assurance. And uh, right now leading the way would be the first driver to get to three wins if uh, with this year if she could pull it off. Mm-hmm, and of course, the funny thing is, I think uh, we didn't have a three-time winner last season until Drew Webb won Chicagoland, interestingly enough. Um, so, kind of interesting that, you know, I feel to myself, we haven't had a three-time winner yet this season. That's kind of strange, but it didn't happen until race 21 last year. It could happen here tonight as Kirsten Bell leads this field. Logan Williams looking to strike right back, and that brought Matt Tuck and Thomas Strasser right in, and all these guys are right on each other now as well. This this could theoretically go to any of these drivers, especially if a caution falls a certain way at a certain time. But some good stuff here at the Iowa Speedway, and we're loving what we're seeing here in this Iowa Corn 350. And Logan Williams trying to get back on this 93 machine. These two guys are essentially even right now, I feel like. Uh, both have very fast race cars, and they can't get away from each other, but Kirsten's going to pull away a little bit there off the exit of turn two. And we're closing in 41 laps to go. Now keep in mind, these guys still have to come back down the pit lane again to top off on fuel. About a 48-lap fuel run for these guys. They cannot make it to the end of this race. Nobody can make it to the end of this race, so it's going to get really interesting if this thing stays green. Yeah, absolutely, and that's that's really important. I talked about the execution of fundamentals on pit road, while Ladovic, for example, you know, got held up on pit road, lost, went from I think it was like top five to fourteenth. You know, Ladovic now back up to sixth, uh, right in behind these guys. So uh, clearly, a lot of speed in, in our two cars, which is good. Logan Williams right on the back, and once again, this is the spot where you want to try and make a move in one and two. Doesn't look low. He's there. He's on the inside of Bell, and uh, we'll see what he can do into turns three and four. It kind of takes a full lap to really make the move. You get to the inside in one and two. You complete the pass, or at least attempt to complete the pass off of three and four. Uh, the big benefactor this time now, or the big factor this time, is Matt Tuck. As Bell's in the outside wall, Matt Tuck trying to take second away, and this 54 is right on the back bumper of Logan Williams, and nose to the inside for the race lead. Will Matt Tuck dive it in the three? It looks like he will attempt to do so, but Williams will hold the outside and take the lead back away officially from Kirsten Bell. And here comes Drew Webb in this 99. That brought everyone right into the lead battle right there. And I tell you what, what a battle it is up front here in this Iowa Corn 350. Matt Tuck holding on the second. 
ahead of Drew Webb. Now, I'm going to mention right now, one Webb that is not having a good night is Brian Webb. This is a driver who came into this race 20 points ahead, whereas his teammate is Braden Perez, who is 12 points behind the cutoff. He's not doing too, uh, too much better himself, but Brian Webb not doing himself any favors here tonight, and he wasn't caught up in anything either, so... Definitely something to keep in mind as this race goes along in terms of the chase grid because that 13, Brian Webb has not run top five at all this season. He could be the driver who ends up getting knocked out if someone else finds themselves in the top 10. All four of these guys under a blanket right now behind Logan Williams. Matt Chuck trying to find an advantage on the 95, but he's got Drew Webb right behind him trying to pressure him into a mistake as well, but they all stay in line for now. Drew Webb might have a shot for second place on Matt Tuck. Not quite yet as Matt gets the run on the outside, but Drew's going to be right there. He's going to dive it in the one once again. Yeah, and the thing about Brian Webb, these three guys here, 8th, ninth, and 10th in points. So mm -hmm. this is a, and Bell is 12th. So that, this is a really bad night for the 13th team. But Drew Webb now up to second. We saw before, he was really racy in that first stint. Again, another one of those drivers that lost ground on the pit stop. And now he's up into second. Ladovic up to third. These, these two cars here, 99 51, are flying a match in the outside wall. That's not ideal. Hopefully, he doesn't have to repair any damage on the pit stop. It doesn't look Otherwise, like it. Otherwise, it'll send because it'll. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but you never know. L to the inside for the fourth position. Shout out to Philip Torres as well in the 20, running in sixth uh, right now. It's not been a great year for him, but uh, doing a good job tonight. Yeah, Phillips, 29th in points coming into this race, and he is legitimately running with these guys as well. He's moved himself up to this point with that Rut Racing 20 machine. I'm sure Joe Rakowski's loving to see that out of Philip Torres. Like I said, not been the best of year for Philip, but you know what? Great to see him have a good run alongside all these veteran drivers who are running top 10 in points. Of course, Logan Williams is uh, 19th in points. It's not like he's much better, but we know uh, from experience that Logan Williams can win races and compete with these guys. He just doesn't do it consistently, and that's been his downfall. But uh, may have another downfall here as Drew Webb is right behind the back bumper of this 95, trying to get his first win of the season, trying to get his seventh Wall Wall Cup Series race win. Of course, he has more Wall Wall Cup Series race victories than any other driver. But he has not gone the victory lane once this year, and I know he'd love to solidify his spot in the chase and defend his Wawa Cup Series championship. Big, The big, big factor, though, in the, this race right now is what will the cycle of pit stops be like? Because you know they can't make it to the end, so all these guys are racing it out right now. And, uh, I just don't know how it's going to end up shaking out. When do you want to come down? Do you want to take tires? Do you want to risk taking tires? I mean, it could end up being a wild card winner considering how late that last cycle is going to be. Of course, I'm sure a lot of these guys just hope for a caution at this point so that they can get their pit stop out of the way and don't have to worry about it. But uh, we've been clean since that restart around lap... I forget, was lap 30-some? Lap 32, I think? Lap 32, lap yeah. 33. So, uh, I don't know. We've gone a pretty good distance under the green flag here. These guys are starting to spread out as well. Yeah, they pitted about lap 30, so you'd expect these guys to come down with about 10 to 15-ish laps because Webb pokes his nose to the inside of Logan Williams. Oh, he's Williams got it. He to the inside, he's got it there. He's at the quarter panel. And now to the inside of Williams. Oh, Williams trying to power it off the turn. That's a strong, strong move there by uh, Williams. Once again, getting that outside lane to work on Webb. Oh, boy. Dive it in. Oh, my goodness. That's going to uh, open the door for Ladovic. There. That's going to open the door. He got loose, and now Ladovic to the inside trying to get second. And she's going to be able to get second as well, I feel like. That 99's not going to be able to get the run off the exit like Logan did that last lap. That's going to be tough. That 99's oh, yeah. a lot of grip off the exit of turn four, and that's that's where the advantage is for some of these guys. Ladovic really diving it in right there. Oh, oh my. That was a good corner for that 51, and now she's going to take second. She might go for the lead on Logan Williams right here. He's going to have a nose to the inside of this 95, at least attempt to do so. Right on that yellow line, trying to get all the grip she can. Drew Webb back on the outside of the 51, and they're still battling for a second. That's exactly what Logan wants to see in his rearview mirror. Ladova going to dive it in again in turn number one, and this time she's going to clear the 99 for, the ra or for second place. Not quite for the race lead yet. Yeah, that was a very, very good battle. These are, of course, these two drivers here, uh, Drew won the, the Cup Championship, Ludovic won the Truck Championship, they're high quality drivers, 
And that was a high quality battle uh, between the two of them there, but it opened the door for Tuff. And Philip Torres now up into fifth. I mean, we saw Chase Buck win last week. Uh, even though, you know, Buck's had a, had a pretty tough season today, and now Torres had a tough season today, but he's in with a good shot as Tuck trying to get to the inside of the 99. We'll see if the 99 can power off of turn four. Looks like he can, although he did slip up the racetrack just a little bit, and the Tuck will be there on the inside of turn one. Webb's going to have to go up, slide up the racetrack just a little bit. And looks like Tuck now on the inside. Let's see if he can stay with the 99 into three and four, and then off of turn four. Here now we go. Look at the inside for the lead. Yeah, she might have a shot this time. If she can keep the nose in the turn one, which she will, she's going to have a shot at this race lead. Will she dive it in again on Logan Williams? Uh, doesn't need to dive it in. She's going to take through its lead. Looking for her second win of the season. Got the win at Kansas. Looking to really back it up, and you know, there was so much talk at the beginning of the season when she signed with you guys, like, she's going to go, and she's going to be the best driver. Obviously, we saw what she did with Andrews Racing last year. Well, now here she is, leading this field at Iowa, looking for her second win of the season, second win in the Wall Wall Cup Series, and looking to solidify her spot in the Wall Wall Cup Series chase as well. Drew Webb trying to close in on Logan Williams. The magic may have run out for that 95 team. Now that he's not in the race lead anymore, and Drew Webb has the nose to the inside for second place and he got Logan a little squirrely as well so Drew now going to take position Philip Torres looking to take fourth away from Matt Tuck right here how about Philip you know this is a huge showing for Philip Torres and you know maybe a little bit of a resume builder for next season you know he is going to be one of those drivers who will find himself a ride next year but uh, I know I know he wants to stick with rut racing I know he wants to find a good ride and that's just not been the best season for him here but he has definitely proven himself here tonight at the Iowa Speedway, and he has an opportunity at winning this race if things go a certain way. He's going to try to close in on Logan Williams now. I I genuinely believe that Logan may have been holding the field up a little bit because Drew Webb, Ladovic, Charette, they pulled away from that 95. They continue to pass that 95 machine, and they're now starting to spread out a little bit more as Drew Webb's now on the back bumper of Ladovic for the race lead. This 99 trying to get around the 51. I know you want to see Ladova get another one here. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, you've got to remember when Ladovic did win that race at Kansas, who was second? It was Drew Webb. So, I mean, these two have had a, have already had a battle for the win earlier this year. And uh, again, they are such high quality drivers. And I think, you know, they're eighth and ninth in the points. Of course, they're champions in respective series, cup and trucks. And I mean, they're pulling away from Logan Williams now. I mean, they're. Clearly the speed, these two cars right now are the fastest too. I mean, the gap is now nearly a second from the lead to Logan. So it is over a second rather. So it's, yeah, it's, we'll see how this one pays out. And then of course you've got the pit stop coming soon as well. And that's really going to determine who wins this race. Assuming this race stays green. Move back through the field. Laura Chung still holding on to a top 10. Bruno Diacomo running in the 10th position and uh, 31st in points for this team. It has not been a good year for Trinity River Racing at all with their two drivers of Diacomo and Jesse Turner. Travis Crampton just outside the top 10. You got Brad Stover for still a good run for Joey Brown in the 11. Matthew Hubert. LJ Semedo. Remember, he got caught up there with Andrew Miller. He's up the 15th. Those Ty Fury cars have some speed even if there is no fender on the back of the car. Bryce Egan, Brady Mardi Gras, Daniel Paulus Jr. Now, Paulus is another one of these guys in the wildcard race. He's 18th right now. Gutierrez is the one he's battling, and he's right now ahead of him. Uh, not a good day for Sam Medeo. 20th for Sam Medeo, but uh, still had enough of a point gap to really hold on to it. As somebody's down the pit lane, I feel like someone just uh, came down, and here we go. Cycle's beginning now. Here we go. You got Chase Buck. You got Avery Alford. Blaine Key's down in the back of the field. The race leaders are still out there with Ladovic Shred and Drew Webb. Uh, Matt Tuck's going to be the first one, so... Will the undercut work for Matt Tuck? That's going to be the huge question. Will he gain any positions? Now is the time to hold your breath because you do not want a caution coming out now if you're one of these drivers who have come down the pit lane. Dovic and Drew Webb, they stay out this lap. Same with Philip Torres, Troxel, and the 93 of Kirsten Bell come down. Laura Chung as well. Of course, Logan Williams has also come down the pit lane as well. Dovic and Drew Webb. I don't know what kind of advantage these guys who have already come down the pit lane are going to have on our race leaders currently. 
That's not going to help these guys with Drew Webb and Ladovic Trail with Avery Alford coming back onto the race track right ahead of them. But Ladovic definitely pulling an interesting strategy, trying to stay out and lap these guys, of course. Yeah, Thomas Trossel coming down the pit lane as well. I would imagine Ladovic and Drew Webb we're just waiting for these guys to cycle through so they don't get into anybody trying to come down the pit lane here. They're still staying out. We'll have to see when they come down. Yeah, so I said it was like uh, about 10 to 15 laps to go. Well, we're at 11 to go now. I think, I think Logan was the first to come down on 73. So it's about where we expected them to pit. So these oh guys are running at Oh boy, there's your oh caution. Oh boy. And someone got sent around in the turn number three. It may have been the 31. Of course. Man, Corey Case, oh, uh, that's the second time he's gotten into it here tonight. And during the cycle of pit stops, no, no less as well. Now we will utilize, of course, the wave around for these guys. So I don't think we're going to have too many guys a lap down. Um, which ultimately won't affect... Oh, is Ladovic still staying out right here in this 51? Yeah. That is... They're not going to try There's to stretch no it, are they? It. No way you can make it. Yeah. Oh, boy. Drew wow. Webb's down the pit lane there. Philip Torrey's also trying to stay out and stretch this. I, I don't know. I don't know about that. Are they trying to keep these guys a lap down? Is that what they're trying to do? Because if they stay a lap down, they cannot get the wave around. And that is a very interesting situation if that ends up being the case. Yeah, I don't know about that. Because I, I don't think I, you, I don't think you can make it from, from lap, what they pitted lap 30. So you've got to go about 58 laps. I mean, that is, that's a long, uh, that's way longer than we kind of expected. So uh, maybe they're just trying to splash and dash it at the end, perhaps? I don't know this strategy. I don't know about this strategy. Yeah, they're, they're oh, coming down coming now. Down. Which will concede the lead to, the lead to Daniel Paulus oh, no, Jr. Daniel Paulus. As he's staying out in the 24 machine. He gets a bonus point for a lap lead and he needs mm -hmm. it in the and wild And that may actually shocking. be what he's doing because he needs all the points he can I get. Can I can again understand too. He had a good run Bryce going Egan. right there so we'll have to see if that ends up being the case for him. I think Bryce Egan's going to jump the 51 as well. Is, uh, he came. He pitted with Webb, so I think the 69's in a good position too. Mm -hmm. And and Crampton and uh, Garcia and all these guys. Like Justin Zidell is fourth or second, yeah. essentially. So we'll see if Paulus and Zidell end up coming down right here. This will be an extended caution as well to allow us to wave these guys around. So we're going to have to see what Daniel Paulus Jr. and Justin Zidell do right here. And what their decision is, because yeah, there there goes Paulus, and there goes Justin. So everyone will wave back around, and Drew Webb is going to be your race leader. That is such an interesting cycle right there, and, and that's the downside. That's the unfortunate downside to uh, having a caution under that cycle of pit stops. And that's why I said earlier on, all those leaders, they wanted that caution to come out when it did. Very interesting, though, with Ladovic and those guys staying on an extra lap. That's definitely going to hurt them. Let's go ahead and uh, see what happened, then we'll get back to racing. It's going to be a few laps to go here in this Iowa Corn 350. Well, it's what we were fearing, and uh, that merge just at the wrong point there as Corey Case just drives right in the Laura Chung who's coming back on the racetrack. Oh my goodness. Sends that 55 around into the outside wall. That's a tough break for Laura Chung as well. She had a really good run going for a top 10 run. Roberto Cohn Jr. just, man, he, they skirted that 31 just a little bit. Corey Case in the outside wall. And my goodness, this is going to majorly affect a large part of the field. And a large part of the field that was running up front in this race as well. Yeah. Tough break, tough break for, I mean, I'm not going to say, it's a tough break for Laura Chung. The Corey Case was the one to just cut right into her right there. I mean, yeah. And at the end of the day, it is still just a video game. Corey Case himself did not mean to do that, but, uh, 
That's why you got some driver ratings and some of these guys who would probably not make that move. So, tough break there for those guys. Hey, let's uh, replay that one more time, if you if you don't mind, Stuart. Um, I know that 31 car has not been your friend the past couple of weeks, and then we'll get to the restart here. Uh, we cycled a lot of these guys back on the lead lap. It's going to be Drew Webb, your race leader here, with about five laps to go. Corey Case wants to come down this time, and uh, Laura Chung's coming off of Pier Road, and a bit of a misjudgment by the 31 into the wall coast the 55 and then a little bit extra on top of that really a lot of damage now on Corey Gates' car in particular Laura Chung it's such a shame for Chung you know riding that oh my goodness look at Anna Parton coming back on the racetrack but uh, yeah it's a shame for Chung because she's right up in that you know 6 to 16th group right at the bottom of that needs a win and uh uh, takes her out of contention. She was up in the top 10 for a lot of the race to that to this point. So that's a massive shame for the 55. And then this right here, this is very interesting because Drew Webb comes down, Ladovic stays out, and uh, don't exactly know what the strategy was there for Ladovic because she didn't need to lead another lap in this race, and uh, she's going to be caught a little bit ways behind on this restart with Drew Webb leading the field. So let's see what happens on said restart here in the Iowa Corn 350. We have returned to the Iowa Speedway, and my goodness, Drew Webb really got out of that one by staying out and then coming down when he did. He is your race leader. It is going to be four laps to go when we restart. It's Bryce Egan, Travis Crampton, Ace Garcia, the double zero of Nathan Faden, Andrew Miller. Ladovic came down a second later right there, or a lap later, and he is down in seventh. Then it's Philip Torres, and then it's going to be all the way back around because we have a bunch of guys who are a lap down, who got caught a lap down. Daniel Paulus Jr. in the 24, who is currently ninth. Justin Zydell and Sam and Oskin. The 13 is, I think, multiple laps down. 95 of Logan Williams, Matt Tuck, Bruno Diacomo, Thomas Troxel, LJ Semedo. Those are the only drivers on the lead lap. Will Drew Webb finally get his first win of the season? We're going to have to see. He's got Bryce Egan trying to go for his first ever win. Travis Crampton as well, but a good jump out of Drew Webb there at the start. Yeah, and it's very good start. Look at the gap he's already pulled on Bryce Egan. Look at Travis Crampton here looking to the inside as well. In the, in trying to get up to the second position. How about the 44? Ace Garcia somehow fourth. And then you got the double zero in fifth. This caution has completely thrown things out of whack because you got Jack Haas a lap down, for example. That's not good for him. So uh, it's completely thrown everything out of whack. As uh, Ladovic now up into sixth. Let's see how much down, uh, how much ground she can make here. I think Drew. Oh, Webb caution's this back one out again. Oh, we got a and Avery oh, Alfred got it. spun around, Avery. and that's gonna seal it here tonight at Iowa. Well, Drew Webb, first win of the season. Uh, I'd say that uh, he didn't deserve that one because he was very fast all night and uh, as long as as long as he makes it back that's the important mm -hmm. thing because we've seen uh, Bristol for example so as long as he makes it back he'll uh, win this race and he'll be in because uh, I highly doubt he'll fall out with based on the fact that he's going to get a win. So Drew Webb just has one more lap to go to win this race here at the Iowa Speedway at least for Matt Tuck, and at least specifically for the 54, because he is right there on the cutoff. He's 13th, it looks like, which isn't too bad, especially considering the way some other guys have gone. Uh, Brian Webb, of course, 31st, so he's one of those guys who's going to fall back a little bit. It's such a shame that that caution fell out the way it did. And uh, it's yeah. just the nature of it sometimes, and uh, that's the way it goes. Of course, I also wish everyone came down the pit lane under the caution at the same time because it would have been a great battle between Ladovic and Drew Webb for the win. But you know what? It's the way it falls, and especially this season, trying out some of these new tracks. Iowa Speedway, definitely one of the tracks that, uh, as you can tell, it's got a little, little bit of a goofiness factor to it. But definitely not a surprise winner. No doubt about it, or defending Wall Wall Cup Series champion of Drew Webb, who... Very well, if that thing stayed green, could have gone to victory lane. It looks like he is going to get the race victory here tonight in the Iowa Corn 350. The pace car going to stay out ahead of him. We're going to end this one under caution here tonight with Drew Webb going to victory lane here at Iowa. Our defending champion gets his first win of the season here in the Wawa Cup Series.
What a fantastic performance. Uh, I mean, he was started from seventh. He was up front pretty much all night. And, well, oh, and, uh, oh, well we're gonna, I'm going to have to talk to my crew chief on the 51 camp because I don't know what was going on there. But uh, the 99 made the right decision. They stayed out longer and uh, came down into that first lap of the caution and uh, got the lead. Cycle back through to the lead and uh, uh, got the job done. Got a great restart as well. Pulled away from Bryce Egan. He was going to win that race regardless of uh, that last caution coming out or not. Mm -hmm. but, uh, what a massive win for, uh, for Drew Webb. Gets him in. Well, certainly now, or almost certainly now. I'd be surprised if he didn't make it at this point. But uh, great performance. Bryce Egan, second again. Uh, so another strong showing by... Uh, the 69 team, Travis Crampton. That's Travis Crampton's first top five of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and so Ace Garcia. Ace Garcia will no longer be last of the full-time drivers because of that. And then the, the double zero as well, <laughs> finishing fifth. Uh, that is amazing. Uh, Ladovic sixth. Andrew seventh. Good run for Andrew. Good run for NS Racing. They needed that. Mm -hmm. uh, Bill Torres was another driver who was also very strong tonight. Probably deserved better than eighth in the end. So... Uh, yeah, very wacky field in the end. Yeah, and realistically, though, I don't think anyone particularly got screwed out of the chase spot because of what happened. I mean, Matt Tuck, still 13th, you know, that's that's what he needed here tonight, especially with Braden Perez finishing behind him, Laura Chung finishing behind him, Daniel Paulus Jr. even finished behind him there as well, and Kirsten Bell... If we're actually being honest, that's probably the one driver that got the worst end of that. She ended up finishing 22nd in this race after dominating, and uh, it's going to be interesting now because Daniel Paulus Jr. is going to close in on her. That's good for Daniel. He had a solid run, stayed out. I mean, it's such a shame. We had such a great race, and then and right there into the end. But we kind of kind of feared that happening when that caution came out when it did, and they stayed green into that point. Of course, Rogalor and Trey Barta with issues well before any of the shenanigans took place. But uh, regardless of the fact, Drew Webb earned this win and arguably probably would have won this race even if that caution didn't come out. Of course, Ladovic had a shot. And I don't know why she came down the pit lane. I tell you, your pit crew, your pit crew this year, they've done some interesting things. And uh, we'll have yeah. to see if you guys can get that worked out before the chase. But still a great run for great run for Matt Tuck and Thomas Troxel as well. It was a driver who was kind of up there finishing 12th. Of course, he's already going to probably uh, lock that regular season title with this run as well. Maybe not necessarily, but we're just going to have to see. Uh, Sam Adio also fell back quite a bit in that one, I think. Yeah, 25th for Sam Adio. So we'll see how those points shake out. It's it's going to be interesting. No doubt about it. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching. And, you know, Drew's probably happy he got this win now and uh, didn't go into New Hampshire because remember what happened in New Hampshire? He was the dominant driver near the end of that race, ran out of fuel at the end, and gave the win to Braden Perez. So we'll have to see how that goes, but it is the 50th Cup Series race, 50th Wawa Cup Series race to be more specific, and the last race before the chase. And uh, we'll see how it all ends up shaking out with one race left. Who's going to make it into the chase? Who will not? And it's going to be a very interesting race. There were 75 laps around the Magic Mile. Thank you so much for joining me, Stuart. And you know what? We had a fun one once again. You know, we always have something crazy here in the Wawa Cup season. Once you believe it, this was not the craziest race of the year either. <laughs> We've had some crazier yeah. ones so far. But uh, hopefully once we get to the chase, these guys can truly just race it out to the end. And the best driver ends up getting in this championship. Because let's let's face it, we got a lot of drivers who could win this Wawa Cup Series championship this year. And uh, Drew Webb isn't quite the class of the field like he was last year. Even though he got the win tonight. There's still a lot more, uh, lot more competition to face this year than there was last year. But either way, thank you guys so much for watching once again. Huge congratulations to Drew Webb on his race victory here at the Iowa Speedway. And here are the point standings after 19 races. One race left to go until the chase caught off. Thank you guys so much for watching once again. On behalf of Stuart Gratton, I will see you guys later.